this discussion with a gravitational wave science researcher and today we have with us gopi patel who has recently completed her masters from iser kolkata uh, it's great to have you here gopi today and i'm really excited for a fun talk with you so let us begin right away by asking you to tell something about yourself and the work that you had done as a part of your research Okay, so uh, my name is Gopi Patel, and uh, I'm currently a master student. Uh, this is my final. I'm in my final year of master student at Kaiser Kolkata, and I'm working under Professor Rajesh Kumle Nair, and we are working on a gravitational wave data analysis, uh, so which includes a detection and parameter pipeline. So uh, my current uh, work includes uh, det creating detection and parameter estimation pipeline. and what we tried was to include a neural networks to enhance the performance and maybe to reduce the speed uh, reduce the time taken to make a detection and to estimate the component masses so that is a uh, overview of what i'm doing as well so this is your masters project and so can you tell us about uh, your btech life a bit like uh, how has uh, the four years of btech been different from what you had been doing now like if i ask you to compare and contrast what will be your answer yes i i could say that the four years of, of uh, b tech like, was very different from the masters life that i'm leading right now because uh, engineering is a very uh, first of all solution oriented uh, uh, course so you focus on the solution but research is more like the journey like you see what you are doing the progress you are making and how you are reaching to the solution so yeah that was the biggest contrast that i would say and uh, in terms of the lifestyle Well, actually, I was also a bit naive when I was in BTEC. So we used to have more fun, and you know, study was just a part of that thing. But during the masters, it's it's more like work. So I'm a bit more focused, and I feel more responsible towards what I'm doing. Responsible towards my project. So that is the difference that I feel. Okay, so it sounds really cool. Like you are getting to work with these invisible cosmic creatures. but just as you said that research is way more different so my next question is what had made you choose research over a real job like you completed btech you could have easily gone for some job and uh, maybe they say the life is easier when you get some job right after btech so uh, what right. did you choose uh, the hard way like within quotes the hard way So actually, the thing was, uh, I did get a job after my BTEC. I got a campus placement at a company in my hometown, actually. So I was always interested in astronomy, but I never thought of taking it as a career path because it felt very daunting, you know, from the outside approach. It doesn't. I cannot figure out what's going on there. I just know they're studying about something. And job, as I have been in the industry, I have done internships. I've worked with Airtel and also. I sort of knew that. what to do in a job or how it goes but when i started as a full time you know in the i entered the corporate world i realized that this is not meant for me you know in research you have a command over what work you do it's for yourself it's your baby you do it for yourself for the community but job it feels like you are just one small peg or small you know tool in the entire system so i don't feel maybe at that time it not may feel the significance of what i was doing whereas in research i can feel what i'm doing is going to make a difference and it's uh, my work it that feeling that i have the control over my work my working hours the people i choose to work with that felt you know liberating to me in comparison to a corporate job so i left the job after what working for 2 to 3 months and i thought i'll do a masters in astronomy that's uh, really very inspiring for anyone who is uh, willing to pursue research after their masters like uh, uh, going for a job you have beautifully brought out the difference between a job and the research so from your point of view it sounded like a research is a more independent option than going for yes a i feel so yeah great so uh, 
we have been stuck in this pandemic and it has been pretty pathetic for all of us so uh, has yeah. this affected your work in any way like you had been in campus definitely so, yeah so actually no actually the thing was i was not in the campus so okay. we were asked to leave as soon as the uh, actually i was at home for the spring uh, vacation and then the uh, you know the students were asked to leave because of the initial wave so during march as the students were asked to leave so after that i have been at home for like what till no, december january ha uh, till january then i went home uh, went back to campus so that definitely affected my work because first of all there was a loss of schedule and there was some ambiguity in the case when when i'll be going back how i'll be resuming my work and so that sort of you know this purpose started you know shaking that what should i do at what speed should i do that uh, sense was lost and secondly there was a monotony that set in because you know you are stuck at home this quarantine you have nothing else to do when you're in your campus or in a normal day to day life you have many other things apart from research you know so that you can connect back to the research because without that i don't think the research, the interest still stayed i think yes. so there was something monotony in the loss of schedule all that affected my work but luckily for my professor he used to keep frequent uh, meetings and all so that sort of gave the track so that i know that by this meeting or by this time i should be done with this much and all that so that somehow helped me to be on track with my work so yeah, i got affected very much affected by this pandemic okay so uh, right now where are you residing like are you at home now like uh, has normal cb yes. restored or sort of i mean we do have night curfews but uh, otherwise it's fine and as per my work also i had my i had to work on my thesis so yeah everything was in place because of that we had a deadline so uh, now we have a set of questions which are not directly related to your work so these are going to be some fun questions uh, so nice. the, the first question is like uh, what other hobbies or interests that you have which you know help keeps you focused on your work rather than getting bored with it like research is a tedious process but you must yes. be having some hobbies too so that you can concentrate more on your work so what are they right so uh, firstly i would say i like to paint uh, so what i do when i give a, a long run you know when a coat takes much time so i take a nice small canvas and i start start painting right there so i keep my paints and canvases along me i still have them on my table okay so that sort of you know uh, sort of stress buster sort of a thing i'm not worried about what the outcome will come or how long will it take so i'm just focus on focus on my painting and the next other thing that i do is gardening uh, so that also is a very refreshing thing and uh, and you know just 5 10 minutes in my garden a nice walk and i'm refreshed so and apart from that another thing actually it's not a hobby it's sort of a challenge that i took i am starting and learning to play violin so it's a very difficult instrument but it sort of you know keeps the research stress apart because i'm already stressed of how to play with it and all that so these are the two three things that i try to do to keep my mind at you know peace and all um uh, einstein himself used to play violin like it's a well known story that mm, Right. Uh, being a scientist he wanted to play the violin with full passion so i could somehow relate right. to you with that <laughs> it's a good like, i am going on the right track it means <laughs> yeah, yeah he had done so much uh, related to gravity and all sorts of things yeah. and you are a gravitational wave researcher so it's some sort of related <laughs> okay so just like you said painting is one of your most important hobbies but other people like reading books and then watching movies mm. and so uh, if i have to ask you one science fiction book movie or series which one of them will be your favorite like and why science fiction yes actually when i watch uh, movies i am more towards animated stuff which is very simple to get and <laughs> it's very fun to watch and all that and i myself am a big potter head so yeah there is okay. always there so everyone would relate to that and uh, apart from that actually more of a fiction person so i like watching supernatural so okay it would very much be contrasting with the work i'm there so it's more of modern myths and mythical uh, things that happen uh, it's series based on that okay and then i've started watching anime and all that so i like to watch simple stuff when i get free you know? 
not <laughs> not, uh, not exactly science fiction but uh, something which uh, diverts yeah sometimes i like that but i prefer right i prefer yes. something simple yeah, yeah. and harry potter is really a great refreshment even i am a potter yes. okay <laughs> Uh, so uh, we all have uh, some person which we uh, you know idolize a lot and we try to learn from that person so do you have any particular astrophysicist or any scientist to whom you look up to a lot <laughs> so um, initially it was stephen hawkins we all have read the brief history of time it is a mandatory book and when you are in you know in your earlier stages everyone is talking about that book but the most uh, interesting part about that book which i felt was not yes it was definitely the science and the whatever he proposed over there but also the way the thing was communicated it was very you know interesting to learn about that and the way he i think the way he thinks about stuff and how the way he perceives uh, about the universe and what is going or what will happen beyond that is what made me interested towards that book and apart from that right now i'm very much inspired by the work that my supervisor does and how he does more importantly because uh, i've seen people get very stressed and you know in you know stressed by all this work all the research work is tedious you know it takes time and all that but he seems very uh, light about it and he enjoys it means if i approach him with some doubt or something he'll take he'll explain it to me twice thrice in times so that is what i'm inspired as of now like at this stage i want to be like some someone like him like this is okay who i look up to that's a very interesting answer actually like uh, you uh, first mentioned stephen hawking uh, like he is definitely an inspiration for everyone all over the world but uh, the next yeah. one uh, whom you mentioned is definitely an inspire inspiration for you in particular right it, it's someone close to me and i've seen him work so that really uh, yes this is a very important thing actually we idolize someone who is really close to us uh, and not only people who are known worldwide okay right. so uh, so the entire idea of this dis- discussion is to popularize uh, gravitational wave science among the student community right. so uh, i have a couple of questions related to that so in your opinion like if i ask you to spark an interest among the student community in the concept of gravitational waves so what will be your idea of that like how will you try to convince the students in getting interested in this particular area of astrophysics so uh, what i feel is uh, anything not only gravitation wave but obviously we are working on that but uh, one person gets interested in something only when it sort of gets an uh, idea about so for a student if i tell him that we use laser interferometers and there is this black holes merging i don't think he'll be for a while he'll be in oh black holes are merging and all that but after that he might not again look up what is going on and all that so what i feel is to make it very basic for them to grasp it i think uh, it is very much i don't remember I means a very famous quote that you understand something only when you can explain it to a 6 year old child or a you know very basic person Yes, so I think that is very mm-hmm. Einstein's word, right? I was confused between Einstein and Newton. Yes. So right. Uh, so that is what I'm saying. That it has to be very basic. And actually, I have seen it when I was in Vigyan Samagam in Kolkata. I saw the model, and everything was very beautifully made. And that was, you know, to see things working in front of you. That can spark an interest. Okay, right? I can figure it out on my own without reading multitudes of book or googling it. so that that ease of information makes it very interesting for students and apart from that ligo and gravitational waves are not just science fields they involve a huge amount of engineering and technology so when you try to explain the simple bits of how this thing works it can attract a wide aspect aspect of students you know because some might be interesting in interested in just how it is observed some might be interested in what it takes to observe such things or and some might be interested in like why Uh, gravitational waves are emitted and all that. so there are very different a wide range of aspects of gravitational wave we can focus on so yeah my ending line would be that make it very basic and very simplified for them to understand on their own actually 
Yes, uh, it's actually very important. Like first we get the basics and then we move over to the tougher things. Obviously, actually, I, mean, I would not like to Google the terms that I've just heard. Like I'm, if I'm in a lecture and they're telling me something about something, I don't want to Google everything once in a while. I just want to get get everything from that lecture. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, since you spoke about astronomy in general, so um, like, do you have any other aspects of astronomy you are interested in other than you know, gravitational waves, which you are working on right now? So um, I'm very much interested in cosmology, okay. the big questions of the universe. Like, uh, actually, I'm hoping to move towards in the field of gravitational wave cosmology, the standard silent methods and uh, dark energy and all that. So I hope that I might get to uh, divert my research towards that field. And uh, secondly, I'm interested in observational astronomy, like sky watching and all that, the phenomenal things. So these are my dreams. Actually, the entire field of astronomy is very interesting. It's difficult to- Yes, you cannot pinpoint, yeah. Yes, okay. So uh, we have one last question for you that is uh, regarding LIGO India. So we already know that uh, this LIGO India observatory is in the making and going to have certain implications for the observation of gravitational waves but what like how is it important for the indian science and technology community in general so what are your opinions on the making of live in india and its implications on right. students so uh, what I feel that uh, we know that how LIGO India is important as an observatory to the LIGO network collaboration. But in terms of the science and technology, I think it provides a sort of a weightage and importance to India. And as well as sort of, uh, if hope would be a strong word or not, but hope that we can also work into a certain, this level of collaboration. And we don't need to move to USA or you know somewhere else to be a part of this big thing. It's right here in India. And actually something that I've, I was in conversation with Professor Martin Henry uh, regarding some project. Uh, and actually he said that because of LIGO India, India is also coming into spotlight. So usually we see that there is this rush of students from India to foreign countries for studying for PhDs and all. But because of this, now there are possibilities that students from outside world will be coming to India to study, to research here. So I think that is some of bringing India up to a level to a level where every other place is standing. And uh, for, for researchers, for scientists, it, as I said, it brings sort of a sort of an importance. Like I'm part of LIGO India. So I feel that, yes, I'm part of something very big. And not only for science researchers, also for engineers, it creates a big band of opportunities that we don't have just IT sectors or uh, you know uh, software companies to work for. We have this real problem solving thing uh, working right over here. And I think it is a big, big pool of opportunities for both science researchers and engineers. I think it's a very good collaboration. Okay, so like that's a very complete answer that you have given. Like anyone who is watching this interview, like I am certain that if they are uh, a tad bit interested in this gravitational wave science, I think they will be motivated to, you know, pursue a career in this field, like the way you have put it. I hope so. <laughs> Yes, certainly. So um, with this, we'll come to this end of this interview. And I like I am greatly excited because it has been a very interesting story that you have shared with us, like the way you have chosen research over job and then the implications you feel this field has, uh, you know, brought to India and to all its science students and technology students. So I think it's going to be inspiring for everyone who has watched us today. So we'll call it a day thank you very thank much you. Gopi, for like thank you for having me sparing your time like researchers are always so busy so it's <laughs> that we could have you and uh, thanks no no it was a great opportunity for me too it was a great opportunity thanks a lot